and I'm not calling. I'm not responding from American Samoa. I'm here in Samoa, not American Samoa. Oh, thank you, sir. You're in Samoa. Hold on just a moment as we look at that picture. Let me bring Chad Myers in as well. He's our meteorologist. Uh, Chad, uh, as, as we start this conversation with Mr. Faso, just tell our viewers uh, what you know, what you think the potential is here for a uh, dangerous tsunami. Well, the very latest from the, the warning center does have a five-foot wave, a five-foot wave on Pongo Pongo. Uh, you will see, that, and I will show you on the, on the Google map in a little bit. I want to get to our guests clear, clearly, but there is an airport right there on the south side, and that's where they were evacuating because that's where the wave would have been generated. Now, I don't know whether 5.1 was the largest wave because we don't know what direction the wave went in, but we already know that there was a wave generated at least at some point. We will watch the direction. We will watch the watches and warnings, and you can go to Samoa American Samoa Pongo Pongo. We will keep advised right here. Go back yeah, to your no, guests. You, you don't have to, to do all that stuff, Chad. Stay with me, man. Yeah. I want you to help me with this interview. So uh, you asked the meteorological questions. Let me just get the basics out of the way. Mr. Faso, what have you been told by authorities? What have you seen with your own eyes? Yeah, we haven't seen any big waves at the moment. It's been half an hour since the earthquake was, uh, was uh, sh shaking. And uh, at the moment, uh, the whole airport at Faleolo in Samoa has been evacuated. And no one's in the terminal. Every, the whole staff been evacuated. And we're still watching the waves from the higher ground at the moment. Why? 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 Big, why, uh, why? Right now. Why did authorities tell you that they've evacuated the airport? It's 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 in um, it's a, our emergency plan, and we about nine nine feet above mean sea level, so that's why we have this evacuation plan because of our lower grounds. Uh, Chad, bringing you back in, how, mm -hmm. I I think I heard you say something about five feet. Can you give us a, a non meteorological answer to what exactly that means? How much? Uh, could that cause in a place like uh, Samoa, for example? From wave crest to trough was five feet. Now, some uh, surfers may call that a two and a half foot wave because where you go up from where you go down. But I want to, uh, we'll just take you right to the area. There is a subduction zone right through. You see that dark area right through there? Uh -huh. That is a trench. That trench will at times take the land going this way and the land staying over there, and it could shift and almost like an elastic band pop back up as it's not going down anymore. It wants to pop back up, and those were the waves could be generated back into the Pacific Ocean. And here is that airport that he was talking about mm. at Tafuna. It is, it is right, literally right there, Rick. I mean, you can see the breakers, and you can see the runway right there on the map. Mr. Faso, are you safe right now, sir? Yeah, we are, we are safe, and we're still watching the, uh, the uh, progress on the waves, but uh, at the moment, we can't see any any sort of uh, peak waves. Well, we are getting reports. As, we are getting reports, as you just heard from our meteorologists, that there are uh, some indications of a tsunami, all, although slight, small, perhaps not as large as the ones we've dealt with in the past. What have you heard directly from people or from authorities about parts of the country, either Samoa or American Samoa, that are already being affected by this, if, if at all, sir? Okay, we we haven't we haven't any uh, we haven't had any public announcement on the uh, on the local on the local media, but for the airport here at Faleolo, as I said previously, I haven't seen any uh, any big waves uh, coming our way. Okay, we'll keep checking back with you, sir. Thank you so much for uh, taking time. Hey, Rick. Uh, T thanks so much for taking time to talk to us now. Uh, yeah, Chad, go ahead. I just want to kind of put it all into context where our caller was from up here compared to American Samoa here. The five-foot wave was, was found here near Pongo Pongo. The two-and-a-half-foot wave, 2.5-foot wave up here. Now, that doesn't mean that that's the biggest wave because you want to kind of take and take a look at where that subduction zone was. You want to almost take a perpendicular wind, a perpendicular wave going that direction. The biggest wave may actually have missed those islands, thank goodness and maybe generated down into the South Pacific. It may have gone a different direction. We still don't know yet. So how about the Hawaii? How, how, how far is Hawaii from that? Hawaii because... is four and a half hours away. Now, not by plane, clearly. But Hawaii would be a four and a half hour wave trip 
away from where this is. So they there's should a, be cool then. There is a watching effect for Hawaii, but there's not a warning in effect. If they know that there's a large wave headed to Hawaii, that will clearly be upgraded to a warning. Right now, it is not. If you are in Hawaii proper, you have a few hours to prepare, but make sure you find out whether a wave is on its way or not before you do anything without a radio. All right, Chad Myers, there you go. Thanks, thanks, man. Appreciate you uh, bringing us up to date on this stuff. I know you're good at explaining this uh, on the fly as usual. And if anything changes, just holler at me, okay? Absolutely, sir. All right, let me tell you something else that's going on. This is important. Uh, we've been telling.